Automatic transmissions are the standard in the realm of four-wheel vehicles. The act of shifting gears is typically left up to the rider in the world of two-wheeled motorcycles, except if you're riding a scooter, electric bike, or one of Honda's many models with the dual-clutch transmission. The clutch hand and shifter foot are on the rider's left side, while the throttle is on the rider's right. Motorcycles get their forward motion from the crankshaft through the transmission, the final drive, which might be a chain and sprockets, a belt and pulleys, or a shaft, and eventually the back wheel. The clutch is a progressive coupling device that connects the crankshaft to the transmission. It is appropriate to refer to changing gears as shifting, since the direction of power transmission is altered when gears are changed. Load is applied to the gear faces while the motorcycle is moving quickly in either direction, whether accelerating or slowing down. For the gears to change, this pressure must be released. The clutch is essential for this. By detaching the crankshaft from the transmission with the clutch lever, you free up the gears to move into the next gear. When the clutch lever is fully extended, the crankshaft and transmission are engaged. This state lasts until the lever is entirely retracted. To move from neutral to first gear or to stop while in first, the clutch must be entirely disengaged. However, once moving, the gears can be changed without fully depressing the clutch. When shifting up or down, it is common practice to fan the clutch or swiftly and partially lift the lever to empty the transmission. This method is crucial as it paves the way for quicker and more effortless gear changes. And it turns out there's a technique to downshift even more rapidly without touching the clutch at all. Remember how we stated the clutch releases the crankshaft from the gearbox, releasing pressure on the gears so they may change? You may get the same effect of unloading by gently rolling off the gas and then back on again. Once you let off the gas, the transmission is unloaded immediately. The bike can be changed into a higher gear if the upshift is timed to occur at the precise instant when the transmission is unloaded. There's no need to use the clutch. Preloading the shifter with your toe can help you gain a feel for the timing of the gear changes. That way, the gears will automatically change when you floor the accelerator. With practice, you can upshift smoothly without using the clutch by coordinating your throttle and shifter actions. In terms of both gear changes and travel time, this is the quickest method. Downshifting without using the clutch is also possible, but it is significantly more difficult to master and provides no performance benefits. It's entertaining though, and knowing how to do so is useful in the event that you damage your clutch lever or cable while out on the road. In order to downshift without using the clutch, you must master the art of throttle blipping, in which you rapidly open the throttle to a partial opening while decelerating in order to unload the transmission and provide room for a gear change. Like clutchless upshifts, this method requires a pinpoint timing to take advantage of the brief gap between when the engine is revving to its maximum and when the transmission is free of its load. In order to get the most out of clutchless downshifting, you should slow down using the brakes. This will keep the engine revs at a steady state regardless of the vehicle's speed. But that requires a skillful combination of blipping the throttle and pulling the front brake lever. Paradoxically, Mastering the various skills necessary to ride a motorcycle is a big part of the thrill and accomplishment that comes from doing so. You should be better prepared to swap gears on a motorcycle, regardless of your prior experience, after watching this video. When the fun must be temporarily halted at a series of red lights, you will want to return the motorcycle to neutral by shifting it down the gearbox. When stopped on a steep incline, you can leave the bike in first gear while holding on the clutch if you like. However, if you need to stop for any length of time beyond a mere second or two, your hands will get tired quickly from pressing in the clutch. Although it is possible to return to neutral from second gear by downshifting to first while depressing the clutch, it is not the most dependable method, especially when beginning a drive. If you feel like you've hit the lowest gear possible, again, no clicks when you press down with your foot, coast to a stop, then follow the steps above to put the bike back in neutral. There's nothing left to do but sit there till the light turns green and then start the process over again. Oh, we almost forgot something. Before you get on a motorcycle, the first thing you have to do is get the right gear. The motorcycle helmet you wear is the most vital safety accessory you can have. If you fall off your motorcycle, it will keep your head safe. The effectiveness of the helmet depends on its ability to preserve your field of vision while still protecting your head. It's up to you to determine which helmet is ideal for your head and your lifestyle. Use a helmet made specifically for motorcyclists and approved for use in accordance with relevant safety regulations to achieve the necessary level of safety. To serve its purpose of keeping your noggin safe, a helmet need not break the bank. 
In the event of a crash, your head will be well protected by a motorcycle helmet that conforms to the DOT or ECE standard. Both of these specifications must pass stringent safety tests before they may be used on public roadways. The extra safeguards are there for your own safety and convenience. Snell helmets are favored by some cyclists due to their conformity with stricter safety standards. Next up is a jacket. In the event of an accident, a motorcycle jacket can shield your vital organs from damage. Leather and synthetic materials like Kevlar are common choices for motorcycle jackets. Try to get a coat that includes protective padding to absorb the impact. It's important to have some room in the arms while still feeling snug in your motorcycle jacket's body. Think about where you will be riding and what kind of weather you may expect so you can choose a jacket with the right weight and characteristics. For instance, warmer weather jackets are designed with additional zippers and vents to allow for the regulation of airflow around the body. Finally, get your hands on some boots and gloves. Both of these accessories improve rider security and convenience. Your feet will be subjected to a lot of stress while riding. Therefore, it's important to have protective footwear. The right pair of motorcycle boots will protect your ankles and have non-slip bottoms with a metal toe cap. You can determine how well your boots will protect you in a fall by doing the grip, toe, and heel, and twist test. The less likely the boot is to twist, the more it will protect you in the event of an accident. Gloves serve multiple functions, including protecting your hands from cold and debris and keeping your fingers safe. So that is all the time we had today, folks. Hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and do hit the bell icon to remain updated about all our future videos. See you all next time.